This is part two, scanning for the interscalene brachial plexus. We've already scanned for the scalenes and the roots of C5 and C6, yet there's a lot of other structures that we need to identify to safely perform this block. There's a bunch of things here that we don't want to put a needle in or local, and too many people don't realize just how easy it is to prang a nerve on the way in. Let's freeze it here. We're in the supraclavicular fossa. We're starting low and scanning up. We've already highlighted the scalenes and the plexus. Here we can see our subclavian artery, as well as the imohyoid running on top, serratus anterior here, and the posterior part of the sternocleidomastoid. You'll notice there's a couple of little yellow dots, which are the suprascapular nerve and the long thoracic nerve. Also take note of the first rib and the pleura. Now importantly, in this view, the corner pocket, if you were doing a supraclavicular approach to the plexus block, would be right next to the pleura. So you've got to be very careful. So we're going to start scanning up the neck. What I'd suggest you do is you might want to pause and rewind this every now and again, just to correlate the labelled anatomy below and what you normally see on the ultrasound above. As an example, this is the dorsal scapular artery running between the middle and lower trunks. Continuing up the neck, and we can see some very important structures coming into view. This is the C7 transverse process, characterised by the absence of a very small anterior tubercle. Now this is really important. These are branches of the long thoracic nerve. As we continue up, you'll see that they run within the substance of the middle scalene, and it's really easy to prang these with a needle if you're doing an in-plane interscalene. So if you see white stuff in the muscle, always are on the side of caution and think it could be a nerve. Here we've got the phrenic nerve, the vertebral artery, common carotid, and internal jugular. Keep an eye on what happens to the phrenic nerve as we go up. Now we're going to watch C5 and C6 dive into their respective TPs. Here's C6. Now going further up, we're watching C5 drop down into its transverse process. As we come back down the neck, you're going to see branches of the long thoracic nerve coming out from both. We can also appreciate the close proximity of the phrenic nerve to the C5 nerve root here. You note that even in someone with fantastic anatomy, we don't have that textbook traffic light appearance here. Yet this is where you'd probably go if you were going to perform an interscalene. Now we see C7 popping out, which will eventually become the middle trunk. This is C8, and then T1 to form the inferior trunk. And again, we'll note the dorsal scapular artery running between the middle and inferior trunk. Again, it's definitely worthwhile to run through this a few times, pause it, rewind it, and correlate the labelled anatomy with what you'll see on the ultrasound. Let me know which block or views you'd like to see next. Cheers.